What's up, guys? Cameron Foose here with FooseLerts.com. It's been uh, another awesome day here for Team Foose 4. Uh, just ripped another $10,000 in profits today. So March has just been just absolutely unreal. Uh, for how much money has this been rolling in? The trades have been, uh, you know, just rolling in uh, left and right, and we've been taking advantage of them, uh, you know, as much as I can. You know, I'm not making the perfect trade uh, here and there. I'm still messing up on a lot of these trades, but all you can do is, uh, as always in trading, is just identify these patterns and at least take a little piece of the pie. You know, I sold MNGA today uh, at about, you know, the 130s, and it was up at as high as 160 today. Uh, so, you know, that was a lot of money that uh, I left on the table, but, you know, you can't really kick yourself uh, in the foot for, you know, not making the perfect trade. I still made $6,700 on this stock, so, you know, uh, that's just today. I actually made $1,800 on this on Friday uh, and got back in. But let's take a look at uh, kind of what was the uh, breakdown of this trade was. So first off, let's take a look back to on Friday. Uh, you know, this was uh, actually, this is Friday's candle here. So this is basically a survival pattern that triggered over a dollar per share. So, you know, it had that, you know, the aspect of it breaking over a dollar, which is always, you know, a very, very hot area to be buying into as well as it was a survival pattern. As you can see, this thing had that huge ramp up came all the way back down. It's kind of started forming a triangle pattern. It was a little bit sketch, uh, you know, not the most perfect looking uh, pattern here, but uh, did kind of start forming this uh, base here and start ramping back up. We had some nice volume spikes coming in here uh, early last week, and then Friday, this thing just absolutely ripped. I got in here on the F1, uh, right out of the gates here <clears throat> on MNGA. As you can see, this started firing. Once this triggered over 94 cents here, that was an F1 uh, pattern that broke out right there at about 92 cents. I can't remember what my exact buy price was here on uh, <clears throat> MNGA on Friday, but I did rip this all the way up here uh, on that uh, trade. As you can see here, this was my analysis uh, from uh, Friday. This is a screenshot that I took. Basically, it was a FUS4 uh, <clears throat> revival or survival pattern, you know, kind of depends on how you're looking at it, if you're looking at just this lead-in trend here, it's a revival, but if you look at it from this, the aspect of a survival pattern of this first run up and then coming back down, uh, forming up the survival pattern. Uh, so I did uh, get right in here at about uh, the 90s and this ramped up that F1 pattern for a huge rip. You know, I got in, I got out, we took advantage of that. And then on the intraday scale, this is the actual one minute chart here from Friday, I bought back in. Uh, 20,000 shares here at 98 cents. As you can see, this was uh, this basically uh, revival pattern that formed up uh, on the intraday scale with this nice triangle formed up here on the one minute intraday chart. If it started breaking back over that 103 area, you know, that was definitely, or the $1 area even, uh, that's definitely, uh, you know, a sign of a potential comeback on the chart. You know, it did have that first run up and then sold all the way off. I took advantage of that morning F1 pop, but then we got back in. And let me close the freaking window here there's some, some guy up here somebody doing goddamn weed whacking out there or something uh but anyways uh you know this was a perfect re-entry for us we took advantage of that first round one i banked eighteen hundred dollars just scalping it you know day trading uh using the foos four strategy you know it's why it's under very important that you understand the intraday charts so you can take advantage of them uh, but I was also swing trading this uh, for round two as we got back there at one. The, you know, the daily chart was still looking hot. And then if we look at today's candle, this thing has absolutely exploded once again. Ramped up 41%. So huge freaking breakout here today. You know, and we got in this early. Uh, here, this was a watch list play uh, that we got in. So it's very important that you're watching the watch list because a lot of my trades come from the watch list. You know, I give you guys time to prepare to buy in these things. I'm not just alerting them and then you guys have to chase them down. You have to be watching the watch list and understanding why those stocks are on the watch list so you can be prepared to, the, to buy these stocks regardless if I'm, if I'm alerting them or not. You shouldn't be relying on my alerts only. If that's what you're doing, uh, you know, your likelihood of success is probably not going to be very high because you don't understand uh, you know necessarily why I'm alerting these things you need to be looking at the watch list Understanding the strategy so that you can be prepared for yourself and become a self-sustained trader uh, You know obviously using me as a guide and a mentor But you know basically my alerts are for you to see how it's done uh, And you need to learn how to do do it yourself rather than rely on me You know that's what I'm, I'm trying to teach you guys how to understand these patterns and whatnot But today you know looking here again going forward. I was long 20,000 shares overnight Locked in 1800 on Friday. 
Uh, this had a nice ramp up here this morning. It actually did break an F1 right out of the gates here at about 128 or so. I, you know, this is where I basically locked in profits. If we look back here on the one minute chart, <clears throat> we were triggering over highs of the day here. Uh, so it was looking very, uh, you know, bullish. Uh, but, you know, I got a little antsy and I wanted to keep these gains. I was up, you know, about $7,000 on the stock. I think I sold half. Uh, ch -ch -ch. Where did I start selling here? I sold 10,000 shares at 134. Uh, this was spiking up here. And then we started coming back down and breaking down the 13 EMA uh, on the one minute chart. Uh, so I was getting a little nervous there uh, and sold the rest of these shares at, uh, where did I sell out here? At 130. Once we started breaking down that 13 EMA, you know, only came back down for a little bit and then actually started ramping back up again. Uh, so, you know, there was still more money to be made. Uh, I could have made, you know, a lot more money on this stock than I did. It could have been a $10,000 trade easily uh, on MGNA. But, you know, I still made $6,700. I really can't complain with that. And this actually formed a potential F3 breakout into the close. It's still got momentum. Uh, you know, a lot, a lot of times these stocks that break over one on these four patterns, you know, the first initial, you know, best uh, case scenario target is going to be $2 per share. So whether or not this is going to ramp up all the way that far, it's hard to say. But, you know, there's still a lot of momentum on this stock. It could easily uh, continue ramping up here. Another one was THM. Uh, this was another big win for us today. This ramped up 24%. This was a former play here uh, on THM that I first initially started buying in here at 70 cents. I ripped this thing all the way up towards a dollar per share. I locked in $8,000. Uh, and I actually got back in here at about 83 cents or so. Maybe it was about 86 uh, on this bounce of the 13 EMA. Unfortunately, that same day on this little red candle you can see here. Uh, it had that uh, little run up there on that spike and then actually started selling off. So I stopped out for a small loss on THM and unfortunately this thing actually just continued to slowly grind it out here. And then I actually got long again today, uh, buying in about 97 to 99 cents. So I was averaging about 98 cents. Uh, my average is actually 0.9789 uh, for 20,000 shares I got in. Sold half profits here today. Uh, where did I get out? Uh, if we look towards the end of the day, it actually had kind of a nasty sell-off uh, <clears throat> into the close. If I don't know why this isn't showing everything here. Or uh, TC2000 stalled out for some reason here. Uh, in between here, and we actually had a pretty big sell-off here from about 117 all the way down to 108. I actually got out at 114. Uh, locked in some profit there of about 1600 bucks. I still have 10,000 shares open. Uh, so we're still, you know, uh, potential to see this make a much bigger move to the upside. But, you know, perfect uh, revival pattern here that we initially bought into at 70 cents. If we bring it back here and get rid of these candles, you know, basically I was looking at this as a stock that had been a huge revival pattern. Uh, started basing out here with, the, you know, resistance in the 70s. So as long as that or looking at this, you know, first initial profit target is going to be $1 per share, which is the next whole number, uh, as always. And when you're buying into a breakout, typically the next whole number uh, is going to be, you know, a, a good profit target because there's going to be, you know, a lot of sellers at that mark because that's just how whole numbers work. It's kind of a psychological uh, support and resistance area. So you can see as soon as I bought in here at 70, this thing ripped all the way up towards a dollar per share and pulled all the way back down to the 13 EMA. <clears throat> I locked in my profits up upwards near a dollar per share and I started uh, considering buying back in in the 13 EMA area. Fortunately, I got stopped out uh, on that first try, uh, but then this thing started ripping up here again, looking like it was going to break over a dollar. So I got in uh, about 98 cents, and this thing ripped up and uh, you know had a huge day, up 24%. So still up big here on uh, THM again for round two. So another huge win on uh, THM, and we could still see this thing going higher. Another one was, uh, let's check out OCLS. This was actually a stock that I screwed up today big time. Uh, you know, I bought into this into the close yesterday and, you know, we we're looking at like a very bullish day. If we get rid of today's candle, we actually had this basically kind of same thing as a survival pattern where they had that first huge run up here on the daily chart, uh, came back down and we kind of started forming. Basically, it looks kind of like a, a inverted head and shoulders pattern here on OCLS. Uh, with a breakout in the four dollar range uh, i bought in you know a little bit late i got up in the high 420s because i bought in towards the close here uh last on friday and then out of the gates this morning i basically locked in 150 dollars gain 
uh, on this stock. I think it was 150. Yeah, $114 gain because it looked like it was uh, starting to sell off. We were green and started going red. From here, we sold all the way out to 410. And then all of a sudden, I don't know if there is news. I don't see any news out, but this thing just absolutely just exploded here into the close uh, right over here and went red to green and has had a huge rip all the way up now up to $5 freaking per share <laughs> after hours. So that could have been, you know, another huge win uh, for us or if, for those of you who still held on. Unfortunately, you know, I play it safe a lot of the time, so a lot of times I do get stopped out of these stocks before uh, they continue forward, and I could have made a lot of money. But you know, I'd much rather play it safe than uh, you know sustain losses. You know, losing money in the stock market is a choice. As soon as this looked like it was starting to go into a losing position to me, you know, I was up big on my other stocks. I didn't really feel like uh, giving back any of those profits, and so you know, I played it safe. And in this case, this thing absolutely ripped it back up. Uh, and I could have been up huge on this stock. This ramped up 12 and a half, 12.8 percent, uh, and it was a great looking Fus4 revival. Unfortunately, just got a little too volatile this morning, uh, and I stopped out. But anyways, another one was CBMX, same kind of example here. Uh, this was a kind of a similar pattern. You know, we started looking uh, like we're going to break out over this 320 area. Uh, as you can see, we've basically been having those peaks go up here, uh, right around 327, 325. 321. So there's you know resistance in an area where we we're kind of forming a bull flag here. So I got in here this morning, uh, pretty early, right around I believe around 320 ish or so is my buy price. But as soon as you know we got in, it did have a nice little spike up, and then all of a sudden completely started selling off. There was a bunch of people on Twitter that were starting to tweet about it as well, which kind of makes me nervous. You know when there's other people that have followings on Twitter that start tweeting about these. You know, it's almost like, uh, you know, there's too many eyes on it, uh, too many people that could be buying and selling that could create a lot of volatility. Plus, CBMX is a very volatile low float stock in the first place. So I got a little nervous and I stopped out for a very small loss or actually $450 loss, uh, which is, you know, relatively small for me uh, on this initial sell off right here. Uh, unfortunately, you know, it still held its ground and then just absolutely ripped into the close and actually went up 14 and a half percent. So, you know, I'm not a perfect trader. I do make mistakes a lot of time, but you know I play it safe. I don't allow drawdowns in my account for the most part, uh, and so I'm always you know trying to stay flat or forward. The only reason why people lose is they get into a losing position. You know I just showed you two examples where the stock rebounded, but you know a lot of the times you know maybe even a majority of the time those stocks aren't going to rebound and they're going to continue to fall. And a lot of you guys continue to hold those stocks because you're hoping for that rebound that never comes. And so I don't even like to mess with that. I don't go let myself be put in that position where I'm sitting there hoping for a bounce that might not ever come. If it starts going against me, I get the hell out of the stock. And if I want to buy it back, if it comes from rebounds, you know, I can potentially buy it back. But I never, you know, just sit there and let the stock uh, continue to drop against me. I always try to protect my capital and keep my, you know, portfolio from having any major drawdowns. You know, obviously I give up a lot of profit sometimes or I sell for a small loss uh, and then the stock rebounds and it goes back up. But, you know, I'm never putting my account in jeopardy of you know major losses so you know it's a decision you have to make uh you know it's very difficult to know when to sell how to sell it's you know a pretty much you know all psychological uh to be able to pull the, the trigger you know at the right times when you need to uh so that's you know just two examples of two stocks that i lost on today or i made a very small gain on ocls actually lost 450 on cbmx but if i was still long on those both positions, I'd probably be at five thousand uh, dollars between both of those stocks. So, you know, that's just an uh, example. That's trading. There's not much you can do about it. You do the best you can. You're never going to make a perfect trade. Last stock here that I want to talk about is IDN, uh, which had an awesome bounce up here today off the 13 EMA. I'm still long here in IDN. Uh, Fifteen thousand shares at 89 and a half. So looking very, very bullish here on IDN. Hopefully we can see this get a sustained rip back over a dollar per share. We finally got that 13 EMA bounce uh, and still hoping to see this gold pattern is absolutely explode. So, you know, could still be a bit another uh, big day tomorrow if this stock decides to rip. But anyways, that's uh, basically the gist of the stocks that I wanted to go over today. Uh, you can see here, this is actually the screenshot of my account's uh, $10,000 profit here today. So another huge day. March has just been absolutely ridiculous. And hopefully we can continue to kill it uh, for the rest of this month and on into the rest of the year. But anyways, guys, thanks for tuning in uh, as always. And I will see you guys bright and early tomorrow morning on Foos TV.